This is a very short general introduction to Anonesi, yes? This one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I always have to include this cladogram in modern courses. Here you have the Magnolids. The Magnolids with the Laurelis, the Magnoliades. Yes, next one. Yes, and another one. And there you have the whole group with Mirrors, the KC, Magnoliaceae, etc., etc., and here at the end, the Anonesi. So, and the family you all know, of course, is the Magnoliaceae and the Myristicaceae. An other difficult family to tackle because of the tiny flowers and so on. Yes? Anonesi occur all over the tropics. This was an estimate of some years ago. Maybe the number has gone up or down. I don't know, but uh, that will be about it. Down, down a little, yes. And they are almost evenly distributed in the whole world. I always say the Neotropics has more species than Asia, than, than Asia, but I'm not so sure. The Neotropics are about eight, nine hundred species in Asia. No, I don't know. You don't know. Okay. <laughs> no, I think about the same number. And they are almost all uh, tropical, except for the genus Azimina, the the uh, pau, the pau pau. Yeah. The Pau Pau, which is growing in the United States up to Canada and which produces delicious fruits. Yes? Now, there are Anonesia all woody. Yes. And some are shrubby, like this thing. This is the genus Azimina from, from the USA. Yes. And in South America, they are also sometimes shrubby. And this is a very special one. This whole plant is not bigger than this. And this is growing in the surrounds of Brazil, where they are often attacked by fires. And they have a big underground woody thing, woody stem, by which they survive. All, the, all this part burns, and then they start again from this part. In the past, this species was called Anona pygmea, a beautiful name, but there was an older name available, and now it's called, I think, Anona Warmingiana, after that terrible Danish botanist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, next time. Well, you thought it was Swedish until yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> now, most of the are trees, yes. Lianas, that's very, very interesting. Mm. In South America, I think out of the 900 species, you have three or four lianas only. Mm -hmm. But then you go to Africa, to Cameroon, Gabon, and they're everywhere the lianas. Mm -hmm. And in Asia, is it the same? How much? Yeah, how? Many, many. many yeah? I don't know what the reason is that in South America, hardly any lianas in the family. And in the rest of the world, there are. Yes? All Indonesia have simple leaves, without an exception. 99, no, 95% has distichous leaves. That means leaves in one plane, alternating with each other like this. And there's only one genus in South America called Tetramoranthus, and they have the leaves spirally arranged. When you're coming in the Herbaria, you never, never find material of that genus, because I think many people don't recognize it as Indonesia. So maybe I could find material and the other families. Yes? Hairs, indument, very important for my identifications. I always rely very much on characters of indument, yes? Stellate scales and hairs are, are not are very common, for example, in the genus Duguetia. They all have that. Yes? They have scalates, the scales or hairs. Flowers, position of the flowers. It's a very important feature if the flowers are in the axle of the leaves or are in between the leaves, internodal. It's quite a constant character, at least in the neotropics, and it helps to distinguish the genera. Yes? Yeah. Axillary flowers, this is not from the neotropics, maybe, what is it? 
<laughs> oh yes, it's, it's written down. Yes, this is not new tropical, but here the flowers are produced from the axil of the leaves. Yes. But look at this genus. This is a South American genus. Here's the leaf. Here's the other leaves, and the leaves are internodal. The flowers are. The flowers, sorry, the flowers are internodal. This is the genus Trigenea. Not still very common. Yeah. And cauliflory. In South America it's quite rare, or I should stand here for the camera, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. In South America it's quite rare. I don't know in Asia and Africa. Are there many cauliflory things? Quite common. I think in South America maybe 2% is cauliflorus. Mm -hmm. Like the next one. It's my favorite slide. Mm -hmm. Taken in Bahia of a Guateria. Here producing the flowers and at the same trunk you see here this flower de develops into one fruit with apocarpus uh, monocarps. Yeah, flowers of Anonesi. It's very basal, so maybe it's superfluous to mention that. Anonesi, this is the general pattern. There are some exceptions. Three sepals, yes. One, two, three, yes. Oh, sorry, the no, petals, oh, you are, you are, I, I, I can't follow you, <laughs> this speed is so terrible. Yes. And they have mostly three, uh, two rows of three petals, which are in South America in 95% of the case, free. Yeah? Now this shows the sepals, here you have the sepals, petals, yes? Sepals. Sepals, sorry, yes, sepals, yes, sepals, yes. sepals, yes, petals, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, what do you see here? Where are the sepals? They are the other side of the screen, they are the back of the flower. And where are the six petals? No, this is a species of the genus Anona in which there are only three petals. And they are very, very thick. Beautiful thing. Anona hippoglauca, a species very common all over South America along the, along the rivers, yes? Uh, I should skip this, this is an African one, which we have already seen last week. <laughs> but what's different from, from most Anonesi, when you have a look at the flowers? They have, they have six petals, yeah, he knows it, he knows it. <laughs> Cornates, they have this genus has conate petals, and they all conate into a tube here. Very good, one point for you. Yes, yes. Now here you see it clearly, from this very old slide, I think from 1961. Yes? Now we go over to stamens. In most cases you have many, many stamens which are in spirals. Yes? Uh, here we are. All those stamens arranged in spirals towards the center. Yes, and they all, at least in South America, all have a, a stamen which looks like this. And then at the top, you have a prolongation of the, the connective, and the shape of it differs quite a bit. Here's a shield like, here's a little bit pointed, here's directed to one side. It's a nice feature. And in the past it was much used in the identification keys, but you hardly, you never have many stamens in the flower and say, oh, they are so tiny, so I don't use them very much for identification. Yes? Oh yes, here's the connective. And then in the middle you have carpels, which are, and it's important to know, they are free. Yeah. And the carpels consist of an ovary and a stigma, and in some cases you have a star. It's a feature I don't use very much for my identifications. Yeah. The fruit. The fruit can consist of free carpels, apocarpus, or they can be conate, and then you call that syncarpus. Like in Anona, for example, this is a syncarpus. This is syncarpus. You see, this is all. All those carpels were initially free when the flower was young and then they become all collated to each other. Produce this delicious fruit. Yeah. 
April carbs fruits, yes. Asian one. So this, uh, imagine this is coming from one flower producing three fruitlets and they mostly have here a small stalk called a stipe. And the length of that stipe is quite important. Sometimes those fruitlets are like this. Well, and in South America, in Guateria, they are like this. But realize they were all berry-like, uh, fleshy, not opening. And I'll go to the next. Xalopia. Xalopia has fruits like this. They open, they do this. And what's, what do you see inside? Or is it too far away? What is this white stuff over here? An arrow. An arrow, yes, they have, they have an arrow. And here you see it in detail. The seed and a white arrow eaten by birds or other animals. That's a genus in, in which is in need of, of uh, revision. And uh, that is done now by David Johnson, but I'm not sure if he will end it before the end of his life, because it's yes. a lot of work. Yes? There are other genus in the Neotropics which also have uh, fruits which are uh, dehissing. And now you need to have a look very carefully. The black thing here is the seed, and they are surrounded by a red arrow. We have this thing in cultivation in, in Leiden and Utrecht, and they have it here as well, but I didn't see any flowers in it. It's a very spectacular genus. Yes? Syncarpus, yeah? Like in Anona, where all the carpels are connate with each other, shown here. And this is the same thing which is there. This is Anona muricata, which you can eat, you can make ice creams of it. Uh, it's delicious fruit, cultivated all over the world. Yeah. And the genus Duguetia, the South American genus, has the same. But those things are, those carpels are not completely connate, only up to the base. Yeah. Fruit dehiscent. And he said seeds explosively dispersed. Very spectacular. This is the, the fruits of, Mo, of uh, Anaxagueria. They have two very smooth seeds which are closely to each other. And then the fruit ripens and becomes thicker, and then the seeds are immersed over five, six meters distance. And you often find those colonies of Anasugorea uh, uh, around the mother tree. It's a very interesting genus, also occurring in Asia. Here's that fruit, club shaped, and here are the two seeds closely uh, pressed to each other, and they are explosively disturbed, dispersed, dispersed. Yeah. Seeds have a ruminate endosperm. That means, or maybe the next one shows it nicer. They have all kinds of intrusions into the center. And that's not shared by many families. You have it, maybe you know the family which it has it as well. The nearest to Casey, yes. The nearest to Casey. Yes? <laughs> okay. Okay. And the seed coats, there are hardly any studies about the seed coats in Indonesia. I think that's quite, quite promising. And many, many, it gives many good features. Yeah? This was almost, oh no, this, is, no, this was to show, oh yeah, this is to show Guateria. So maybe you recognize this photograph. This is a revision we just completed. This nightmare genus, I already told you before, because I showed two days ago this open flower bud of Guateria, but the next one shows what's going to happen with this open flower bud. That lengthens and, and suddenly two, two, three times the length when it was young. The flower color changes into white, it produces a kind of smell, and then it's pollinated. Yeah? Uh, yes. Okay. And in some of those other genera of South America, the inner petals have here a rim, and you see it's eaten. 
it is eaten. And what's happening with the flower? This is a young bud, and you see when it's ripening, the flowers do this. They change the color. They produce a smell, and you would expect a pollinator in it, and it was there. <laughs> we checked from this tree, I think, 200 flowers, and we just found one bee. And, yes. this one. and it was very, it was walking away, it didn't want to be photographed. <laughs> That's true, yes, yes. Terrible. The last one? I think so. Showing the wood of Indonesia. They have all those concentric rings here, parenchyma, and then this, this star-like pattern. Every Indonesia has the same pattern. I have here a wood sample from the greenhouse. You should have a look at it, very typical. And then the best character of the family. The bark. Look here. The, the bark is very strong. You cannot break it. Maybe the next person tries to do it. But <laughs> he, he didn't succeed. It's so strong is the bark of animation. Very good character to distinguish the family. So that was the introduction. And then we now go 